1332, Chapter 11, Statistics, Section 1, Gathering and Organizing Data. Video 3, Two Types of Data. Um, I've kind of casually mentioned or alluded to the two different types of data, but um, let's get a little bit more specific, shall we? Also, I want to do one other thing real quick. There we go. No need to be in the Death Star anymore. All right, so let's take a look at the two types of data. Uh, the first type is called categorical data. Uh, categorical data is simply data that is non-numerical. This is also called qualitative data. Because when you have data that's non-numerical, then you're measuring the quality, uh, a quality that something possesses. Uh, for example, for example, I could ask you, what is your favorite restaurant? And I could ask that of a bunch of people. And as I write down their answers, the answers are non-numerical. They each represent a quality that a person possesses. In this case, the quality is what, uh, what's your favorite restaurant? Or I could ask you a question like, what type of pet do you have? I could get multiple answers or I could ask somebody what's your favorite type of pet and the answers I would get are non-numerical. Or I could ask you, what is your marital status? Give them options to choose from, single, married, divorced, widowed, separated. Um, there may be some other answers that I can't think of, but none of those answers are numerical because they are categorical or qualitative. Do you have a tattoo? A very common way to gather qualitative data is to ask a yes, no question. Do you have a tattoo? Yes, no. Now by contrast, numerical data is, well, data that is numerical. I hate circular definitions like that, but to contrast it to the definition of categorical data, which is data that is non-numerical. Numerical data, data is also called quantitative data. So if you do take a statistics class, uh, your professor may refer to the two types of data as categorical and numerical. They may refer to them as qualitative and quantitative. Examples of numerical data. How many times a week do you eat at restaurants? That question would have a number as an answer. Now compare that to the first question up here. What is your favorite restaurant? Both involve restaurants, but one question is categorical in nature because the answer is non-numerical. And the other question is numerical in nature because it's answer is numerical. Not to sound redundant. Um, how many pets do you have? That would gather numerical data because as a question, the answers would be numbers as opposed to what type of pet do you have, which would be categorical. How many times have you been married? That's a question you would answer with a number. Therefore, it gathers numerical data as opposed to what is your marital status, which as a question does not elicit a numerical answer. How many tattoos do you have? That's a question you would answer numerically. Hence, it gathers numerical data as opposed to do you have a tattoo, which would not elicit numerical data. It would elicit a yes or no answer. Now, why do we make a distinction between types of data? Because the way you process data depends upon whether it's categorical or numerical. Categorical data can be processed as follows. Can't let that typo go. There we go. Categorical data can be processed as follows. A distribution table can be constructed to show how the data is distributed. We are going to be doing this very soon. In fact, in this section. A bar graph can be constructed to show how data is distributed. We will be doing this, but we'll be, it will be in the second section of this chapter. A pie chart can be constructed to show what percent of the data belongs to each category. And you've probably seen a pie chart before. That is something we're gonna be looking at in the next section. Now, numerical data can be processed similarly as categorical data, but because of its numerical nature, more can be done. For example, the average can be calculated. Most of you know how to find the average of a bunch of numbers. We'll be getting into those details in section uh, three of this chapter. The median can be calculated, the number in the middle if you line them all up. The mode can be calculated. You may remember that the mode is the value that occurs the most frequently. Now, this is something that's also possible for categorical data. It would just simply say what's the most popular answer. 
percentile rankings can be calculated. You've probably seen percentile rankings before. If you've ever taken a standardized test, gotten back your score and it said you are in the 80th percentile, which basically means that you did better than 80% of the people who took this test. Uh, that's not something that we can do for uh, categorical data because there has to be some sort of ranking and unless as meaningful ranking. So we, we can't just put our answers in alphabetical order and say, uh, you're in the 80th percentile because your answer is uh, higher than 80% of the others in alphabetical nature, but that really doesn't have any substance to it, so we don't do it. Measures of spread like range and standard deviation can also be calculated. Uh, we won't be doing that, but in the context of inferential statistics, I, I refer you to the previous video, uh, the concept of standard deviation is very critical when determining margin of error or whether or not a sample's uh, evidence is enough to refute a claim about a population. So we'll, we'll be doing several of these things. In fact, let me highlight the things that we are going to be doing. We'll be doing this, we'll be doing this, we'll be doing this. In fact, we'll be doing almost all of it. The only thing we won't be doing are the last two. So we will be doing all three of these things before the end of this course.